Welcome to Ask a Star at Brit. I'm Jeremy, the creative marketing manager here at Brit Music and Arts Festival. Uh, today we're here to talk to uh, Tim Saxhog and Eric Berry of Trampled by Turtles. How was your trip into the area? It was lovely. Yeah? I was asleep. Me uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you come from? Uh, we came from Horning's Hideout, the Northwest String Summit. Oh, wow. We were just there for two days. Um, so yeah, it was beautiful. Very cool, very cool. Well, welcome to uh, sunny, beautiful Jacksonville, Oregon. Um, tonight, uh, we give our fans the opportunity to ask some questions, and they do so on social media. Um, we took the uh, top six questions and kind of put them in here, and so we'll just kind of jump to it. Question number one. Several people have all asked the same question, so we're just going to go ahead and start with it. How did your band get its name? I'm sure you've never heard this we one before. We knew this. I just had a feeling this was going to be <laughs> I almost first. even asked if it was going to be <laughs> <laughs> The answer is, what do you think? <laughs> it, it was a brainstorming session, you know, and there really isn't a magical thing to it. Yeah, I always tell people that you kind of propose the name because we kind of, we didn't want to have like mountain grass string boys and all that yeah. in our name. And he kind of presented that to make those seem more palatable. Yep. And then we were just like, well, let's just be that. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, it is turtles all the way down. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is kind of an inter interesting thing because once we decided on it, we, one of the first things I did was to Google it to make sure it wasn't another band name. And some nonprofit in Hawaii was keeping track of coral reef damage caused by sea turtles huh. because they're 400 odd pounds and they can crush a coral reef Interesting. and they'll they'll scratch themselves on it so that's considered to be it's unfortunate but it's acceptable damage it's natural damage mm -hmm. whereas like boats do the same thing but that's bad so they're like tracking this damage and they had their trampled by turtles column and we have made it really hard to find their data because <laughs> now, now you know i think you got to go through a hundred hits before you might not be talking about us <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's interesting. That's kind of cool. Um, a few people also asked, who are your greatest musical uh, heroes or influences? Um, well, I'm a big Beatles guy. You know, that's pretty much all I listened to in seventh and eighth grade. Um, Bruce Springsteen. You know, some of, a lot of the basics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I spent a couple of years with my one wall in my bedroom covered with photos of Eddie Van Halen uh -huh. and I was I thought that was what I thought the pinnacle to do <laughs> was you know, you know so um, I think every one of us has had a different musical idol and we all have appreciated each other's musical idols and I don't know like these days some musician whose story I learn I usually wind up really liking that <laughs> you know like even if I don't like their music I can be a fan of work and dedication as, mm -hmm. you know as well so like I can t I these days I tend to be more a fan of like what I've heard about a musician sometimes and I still listen to my just my old stuff <laughs> interesting oh, cool cool um, next we have Jessica Pearson asks between all of the members of the band how many different instruments does trampled by turtles play and we'll combine that to a second part by Heather Brown what's your favorite instrument to play I mean, bass is my favorite instrument, um, and I have limited proficiency on guitar and piano, um, and I uh, played tuba in high school. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. I don't know if we can do a count right now. Um, yeah, I don't know if we <laughs> can do a count. Uh, mandolin is my primary instrument. I used to be a guitar player. I've played electric bass in bands, and I love doing that, and if I had the opportunity to do that again, I would. Uh, Tim had to step off for a song with a finger issue once, and I picked up. <laughs> I played bass on a Trampled by Turtles song, and I, loved, I had a great time doing yeah. it. <laughs> um, and in high school, I also played oboe and the saxophone, and I played the viola in junior high. Oh, cool. But if I had any of those instruments in my hands right now, I don't think it'd be happening. Yeah. You know? And Ryan can play a bunch of them. Very, yeah, very well. Ryan and Davey can both kind of play anything with strings. Yeah, Banjo Dave is a really good guitar player, and he's a really good mandolin player. Eamon can Eamon plays bass in a band, doesn't yep. he? Yep. And, and I'm sure he knows how to play guitar. Yeah. I, I think all six of us can back up a singer once, on, <laughs> you know, at least once on a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Next we have uh, Dan Popelka 
who asks, who snaps the most strings in the band, and how do you deal with a broken string on stage in the middle of a song? Thanks for the question, Dan. <laughs> um, you know, we don't snap as many anymore just because since we started traveling with an instrument tech, you know, those get changed all the time, but Eric was the champion back in the, the day. I have the record. I have 11 strings in one gig. <laughs> and keeping track, mandolins have eight. So that, that meant I was breaking brand new strings. There was an issue with my instrument. I took it into the shop after that and got that resolved. Um, and my previous record had been seven, and I didn't have spares. <laughs> and so I was playing that last song, trying really hard to break the eighth string. Because then it's just done. This bridge falls off, like, and it wouldn't go. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, that, you know, I had one string, so I'm not being very musical. I'm just being violent, and it's not happening. That, str <laughs> that string hung in there. <laughs> um, let's see. The next question we have is from Taryn Brady. He asks, or she asks, uh, what song of yours becomes popular, or what song of yours became popular that in the studio you weren't quite sure about? Um, I've been surprised at how happy Hollywood off the new record makes people feel when we play it. Hmm. I like playing it, and I never felt like, oh, I don't know about this tune. But to me, that's sort of my dark horse of like when we started, like everyone sort of was like, yeah, you know, like. That's funny because I thought that was possibly going to be one of the singles when we made it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so different from what we've done. <laughs> right. You know, it's just it, it's it's funny the different songs that people connect with. Like last night, there were these this group of people that kept yelling keys to paradise in unison which was only two songs away luckily on the set list <laughs> but i mean that's one you know that i don't think we ever no, were i know it's a favorite of yours yep, it's um favorite, but. but it's one, one you wouldn't really expect a, a organized cheer to go i know that to. victory is <clears throat> one that people really like when we play that off palomino and the version we used on palomino is like the second take we've second time we've ever played that song <laughs> so i don't know if we had doubts about it but it definitely was like a embryonic version that is what people like what they listen to when they listen to the CD interesting I will uh, always remember in my house in Duluth rehearsing coding for the first time and learning it mm -hmm. and Pollard walking through my roommate at the time and just being like the song's kind of weak <laughs> and ended up being like you know one of our you know top five most popular songs probably to this day <laughs> roommates don't always know everything <laughs> Um, and then we'll wrap tonight's uh, interview up with probably the most important question. What is your favorite brand of whiskey? I mean, you know, Jameson is the common thing. I've kind of drifted away from whiskey. Like, the tequila has made its appearance in the back room now, and that's, that's pretty great. But uh, Redbreast is kind of the Irish whiskey of my choice, and I'm not a huge bourbon guy, and... I'm not a big whiskey drinker anymore. Uh, I have Jameson in my liquor cabinet at home, and I almost always drink it exclusively in the winter with hot water and lemon. Uh, okay. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, well, thanks again for uh, joining us. Um, thanks you for watching. There are tickets still available for tonight's show. Uh, the Dead South will be opening, and the show starts at 7 p.m., again with uh, Trampled by Turtles and the Dead South opening. And make sure you are here for the next three weeks. The Brit Festival Orchestra is going to be taking the stage under the direction of Maestro Teddy Abrams. We've got an amazing lineup of uh, classical music for you. Um, so come enjoy that. Come enjoy tonight. Thanks. <laughs>